Hi, I think I am live. Um, welcome to today's webinar. Um, I'm Daniel from Intinor, and uh, today we're going to talk about equipment for live streaming. Um, we might want to give this a couple of minutes. We're uh, looking at the attendee list and uh, we can hopefully get some, some more attendees uh, soon. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, I'm uh, coming to you from uh, Umeå, uh, northern parts of, uh, of Sweden. So it's, uh, it's 7 p.m. over here uh, and uh, we got some rain. Uh, it's very cold. Uh, haven't started snow yet, so we're, we're waiting on that. Uh, uh, but uh, yeah, eager to, to tell you more. So I think uh, I'll start off. Um, and um, I was planning to start with a presentation uh, that looks something like this. Um, so today, I'm not sure why it's, um, I will uh, do a short introduction to Intenor, our presentation and the talk a bit about different use cases. Um, I will show you the technical setup that I'm using right now uh, and also a demonstration of uh, uh, what I'm doing here and, and what our equipment can do. So I have some moderators in the chat, so write your questions there and we'll do a QA and a in the end. Uh, as I mentioned before, I'm Daniel. Uh, I'm the regional sales manager. Um, so I work with customers in the Nordic regions, but also in the US. So let's hit it off. Um, Intenor, uh, we, are, we started off in 2003. Uh, our headquarters are here in Sweden. We are a privately owned company um, owned by the founders and the employees. Uh, right now we are 19 people. Um, we are mainly here in Sweden, but we also have one sales guy in Germany. We work with direct sales here in the Nordic countries, uh, resellers all across Europe, uh, and Exertis Broadcast is our exclusive distributor in the US. Our goal um, is to deliver the best and most comprehensive solution for high quality video over the internet. Uh, on your right side, you have some, some data, uh, fresh data from the website. Um, last 30 days, our live streaming, uh, top five units uptime. Uh, as you can see, one of the units has, uh, has been up for, for four year, years, eight months and 16 days without a reboot. Yeah. Uh, we come from, we started off, or Roland, the, the founder, started off with uh, uh, in distribution and, and uh, local cable TV and stuff like that. So um, we really aim to, to have a robust 24 7 solution, even though uh, we also do a lot of shorter live streaming contribution. Uh, so um, uh, since we started off in 2003, we've uh, created a bunch of different solutions. Um, we have solutions for esports, remote commentary, uh, solutions for network bonding, redundancy, error correction, house worship, uh, remote uh, uh, production, and uh, uh, what we'll, we will be focusing a lot on today is an all IP infrastructure. Um, I've took out a couple of customers. We are working with everything from, from the small one, two man show to, uh, to the big um, production companies, the Switch. Um, I have a couple of esports companies here that, that we've been working very close with, uh, closely with uh, for, the, uh, for the last years. Um, and really proud to see what, what they are doing and, and where they are going. Um, IKEA is, of course, uh, uh, with the sw Swedish heritage we have, uh, it's important for us. Uh, our products is based in uh, what we call the direct series. It's the uh, direct link, it's the black units, it's our encoders, uh, the direct receiver, uh, green one uh, with SDI out, and then we have the direct router. Uh, we will talk about each of these uh, product categories. 
so direct di direct link rack uh, the high quality encoder for live streaming has from 2 to 12 sdi or ndi inputs it can have 1 to 12 software encoders so it can up, uh, encode up to 12 uh, different video signals it's up to 4K60. Uh, higher resolutions mean fewer simultaneous streams. Uh, the more, uh, the higher resolution or the, the higher the, the quality you want to put out, the, the fewer uh, encoders we can have. Um, everything we do, even though it's in hardware, is software. So we are doing software-based encoding and, and it, everything is built on software options. Uh, therefore, uh, the CPU of each unit Kind of determines how much you can put in it um, the main focus for this product is to send one or more cameras from a to b it's point to point point so there's no cloud in between no cloud fees uh, no extra operational fees uh, nothing like that the our units uh, supports multiple different protocols and formats we will discuss this later on and also stream sync which we will also look closer at the direct link has some other form factors uh, we have our direct link mobile and backpack uh, this backpack is based on the uh, easy rig if you guys know what that is um, it has two to uh, two sdi and two hdmi inputs it can also have ndi inputs it has one to four software encoders and same here um, depending on the resolution um, that determines how many software encoders you can have two four or eight 4g modems uh, we're also adding on um, external 5g modems uh, so we are 5g ready uh, true point to point uh, i mentioned this before. return video you can output that on um, hdmi or ndi uh, stream sync uh, same here um, and also other features like tally um, P vpn for ptz control and stuff like that the uh, direct receiver has ip inputs um, it has sdi outputs so from two to eight sdi uh, supports multiple different protocols it's the standard uh, tcp udp uh, but then also SRT, RIST, or Bifrost. Uh, Bifrost is our own protocol. We will look um, at that later on. The uh, direct router. Um, our UK reseller um, coined the term the Swedish Army Knife, uh, and we love that, so why not keep it? Uh, it can have IP inputs, uh, net video inputs. Uh, that is hls rtmp rtsp and uh, or ndi uh, so this unit can actually create the rtmp url and a stream key so you can stream with anything to to this unit uh, you can stream with your phone uh, you can send well srt uh, and and anything it has sdi and ndi both in and out um, all of these are options so the unit comes with the ip inputs but then everything else is options you can add on uh, everything except for sdi can be added on remotely so even though you buy a unit with only ip inputs you can then remotely uh, add features um, once the the need uh, comes up uh, we can have software encoders to transcode or re-encode material uh, synchronized streams multi-view vpn uh, this unit can also be deployed in AWS, um, so um, good for uh, AWS cloud workflow. Uh, uh, much more. Um, this graph or this big picture graphics uh, shows you why we call it the Swedish Army Knife. Uh, everything on top is incoming feeds. Uh, you have our own Bifrost, you can send with other proprietary protocols, you can send with um, other encoders and standard protocols, RIST, SRT, uh, pull from different CDNs, um, and you can do a lot of things in the middle. Uh, and then, of course, distribution uh, to other takers with other receivers or uh, to CDNs, um, stuff like that. 
everything, uh, all of our units can be remotely controlled through ISS, uh, that's Intinor Stream Statistics. Uh, so that stands for remote control, monitoring, troubleshooting, uh, and everything to, to give you full control over your video streams um, from anywhere. Uh, you, you're not, uh, you don't need to be on the same local network. Uh, you can just log in um, on your phone or on uh, your des desktop. So we've mentioned a couple of these different protocols. Uh, we believe that interoperability uh, is very important. Uh, we'll have, uh, we will talk more about this. Um, to, to achieve this and, and to offer our clients interoperability, we've added support for SRT. Uh, we've also added support for RIST. Uh, and we also, uh, of course, have our own proprietary transport protocol called the Bifrost. Uh, that's a bit of a play on the uh, uh, Nordic or Norse mythology uh, to have the uh, Bifrost, the rainbow. Uh, well, if you don't know it, watch Thor or um, have a, a closer read on Norse mythology. Uh, these uh, protocols all have a couple of different characteristics. Um, all of them can uh, can send or push. Uh, it can listen. It can receive. Um, but also some features, right, like requests, where you can pull a signal and um, kind of traverse firewalls, is very uh, good to have. Uh, uh, SRT has something called rendezvous, um, which I haven't really figured out. I have to be honest, um, and I know a couple of of my clients have, have had issues with it, um, but uh, the, uh, it's an interesting theory, at least. Both of these protocols are based on recovering lost or uh, late data packages. And we're doing this um, by forward error correction or FE. Uh, that's redundant data. So you're sending more data than you actually need. Uh, SRT uh, are using something called COP3. Um, RIST are adding this in the roadmap, uh, so it should be available um, in the future and RIST simple. Uh, and Bifrost is using something called Raptor. Um, we are um, all supporting ARQ, which is resending. And uh, so the packages that you don't have uh, will be sent again. Uh, not that great for low la latency applications because the encoder and decoder needs to to talk more and, and to agree on which packages to send. Uh, network bonding to, to use for cellular bonding or the use of multiple ISPs or um, the combination between cellular and, and fixed internet. Um, SRT has that on the roadmap, uh, RIST has it in implemented, and Bifrost uh, does also have it implemented. Um, that's actually where we started off when we created our uh, pack. Um, we, we had the need of a proprietary system, and, uh, and Bifrost was the result of that. Um, adaptive bitrate, um, SRT has it, RIST and um, Bifrost um, are have it uh, path redundancy load balancer um, so as you can see the all of these protocols are very competent um, it's always better to use when using Intinor equipment you, it's better to use Bifrost because we can talk and, and discuss between the encoder and decoder in a better way uh, but um, it's good to have them all and, and especially when looking at interoperability and, and remote collaboration to be able to receive from different partners um, and be able to send to different partners. Um, I read an article this week um, saying from, from Feeds Magazine, autumn 2021 issue, uh, the, the top challenges for broadcasters uh, are uh, transition to IP, uh, enabling a remote collaboration uh, and reducing broadcast latency. 
Um, and I think those those three kind of pin in on what we're trying to do. Um, so that's why I kind of stole it from them. Um, and we are uh, and we will have a closer look into a couple of different use cases um, or setups which uh, can help with this. First off, we have multi-vendor interoperability. Uh, a lot of customers, a lot of uh, um, a lot of uh, broadcasters and, and different production company already have they have their live use. They have their AV vests or the Jeros or their field units, um, and they want to use them because they don't want to buy new air equipment uh, because a bunch of these have started to to integrate and, and add SRT and RIST, you can uh, you can send with the proprietary transport protocol from A to the RX facility or the uh, uh, the cloud receiver. And then you can output that through SRT or RIST to your Intinor direct router. Uh, so this, even though you sometimes might work with different partners, different production companies and so on. This helps with that. You don't need to kind of limit yourself in, um, to one protocol or one proprietary transport protocol. You can you can open up the floor for working with more um, production companies or more partners. Um, this uh, this also opens up uh, the door a bit for, for hybrid events or if we want to say remote collaboration. Um, in this uh, example here, we are adding a lot of, like today, uh, and especially during COVID days, we've all had all of these hybrid events, uh, more or less what I'm trying to do today, um, and uh, what all of us has been, been struggling with. Um, what we're showing here is on your left-hand side, you might have the president of a big company um, sending in uh, it's very important that 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 person is uh, being ingested uh, with high quality with redundant uh, you're sending with bifrost you're maybe using multiple cameras you're sending your powerpoints uh, to to make sure that that connection is is good um, you can um, output that to NDI or SDI uh, to your production facility. That can also input um, Skype, Teams, um, anything uh, you need to, to kind of tie this together. Uh, the program can then go back through the router to the direct link out to a program return all over Bifrost to get that bonded uh, and with uh, redundancy. Um, all of this is then distributed through RTMP or maybe to Teams or, or something like that uh, for the viewers and the non-participants. All of this can also be uh, remotely done uh, over our VPN. Uh, so you can remotely control the, the PTZ cameras or you can remotely control our built-in video mixer um to make sure that you don't need to send out a bunch of different um technicians you want to send out a kit with with a unit um you want to send out a kit with a camera audio and stuff like that but um, once that's done you want to do that remote you want to have the the main technician stay at home um another important thing here is is ultra low latency um i'm not gonna talk about that much here because we will we will show it instead um but uh intinor to intinor glass to glass we can be sub 0 0.5 seconds um and that's pretty good all of this combined uh creates a good solution for for remote production or remy um you have same as, as the last couple of slides, you have your direct link, uh, you can send multiple cameras, um, all in sync over Bifrost with network bonding, getting your redundancy, getting your error correction and everything. Um, you can work with other partners in the same uh, project that might be working on a, a vMix computer, a OBS computer, or maybe sending something in with, uh, with a phone using Larix. Um, you don't really know. Um, but our systems offer you the possibility to, to actually achieve this. This can then be uh, outputted to your uh, TriCaster in this instance. Um, we're showcasing NDI. 
um, everything remotely controlled over the VPN. Um, and uh, in this instance, you also have your TAUI lights. Um, and uh, this is actually uh, what I wanted to, to show you in the presentation. Um, we will uh, now actually move over um, to um, a feed of me and not just uh, the presentation. Uh, we will have a look at the ultra low latency. Um, we will look at stream synchronization, um, NTP accurate, so uh, network time protocol, uh, and with stream sync in, in our solution, you can send from one rack that have multiple SDI inputs. Uh, you might remember that I told you that one unit can have up to 12 SDI inputs. So you could either have 12 um, cameras fixed to one rack unit, or you can have a bunch of different rack units um, connected um, and still be in sync. Uh, we will also have a look at that. Different protocols, we will look at uh, what happens when you add packet loss, what happens when you do network latency. Um, we will also have a quick look at, at video server, um, a, a new feature that we've added together with MIST server. Um, and um, that's pretty cool and uh, can help Remy work and also help with uh, some distribution and, and uh, maybe remote uh, editorial. Uh, so, we'll uh, go back to me, uh, and I'm doing a lot of things here, um, trying to figure out how to work these things. Um, on my side here, I on the top, I have my direct link. Uh, I have on the on the very top, I have the direct mobile unit. Uh, in the middle, we have the direct link rack, and also in the bottom, we have a unit called the Heimdall. Uh, the Heimdall is a rack-based unit with built-in 4G modems, um, perfect to have in a truck or uh, in a flight case like this. Uh, we have one customer uh, or a couple of customers having them in, in trucks, and you have your antennas on top of that, so that's, that's perfect. Um, in the rack, I have the rack units. I have a ATEM Blackmagic production switcher, uh, which we will look at. Um, and um, also a net destroyer. Uh, I will show you more about that. Uh, I can't really show you what I'm doing here because I don't have enough cameras, uh, but I have uh, a couple of Scarhoy uh, controllers. I have a multi-view. Um, showing me what I'm doing. And I have a stream deck connected to our built-in video mixer. Um, so yeah, back to me. First off, uh, I wanted to show you uh, low latency. So what I'm doing right now is actually on our built-in video mixer. Uh, so I'll create a picture in picture for you. Uh, and uh, that should be about it. It's always hard to showcase low latency, um, but what we wanted to try is to send one feed uh, out on the public internet, going back again, uh, and give you a, a kind of good example of this over here. Uh, so if I clap my hands, this is our ultra low latency, so we should be around 0 0.5 seconds. Something like that. Um, this is. Um, the the thing with ultra low latency that the what you need to think about is that you need to have a good bandwidth uh, it's always a, a limitation uh, to to have ultra low latency you have to have high bandwidth uh, you will probably need at least 12 or maybe 15 megabits to achieve good quality uh, with ultra low latency um good I think uh, I think that was uh, about it on uh, the low latency. Back to me. So uh, stream sync um, is the next topic. So uh, here I'm actually um, using this. No, that wasn't correct. Uh, let me go back. Uh, there we go. And uh, there we go. Uh, 
so here I am using this hockey material. So uh, to show this, I'm using a uh, ATEM mixer like this. The uh, right now I have camera one, number one and camera number two. Uh, right now I'm only uh, on camera number two. Uh, if I put this on a 50-50 uh, and we go back to the uh, hockey, uh, right now you see two different feeds. Um, they are not in sync. Um, so what I want to do here is I want to go uh, and have a look at our web interface. Um, I can see on one of my encoders, if we look at this. So one of them, I can see down here that it's 1.8 seconds. So this is the recommended estimated end-to-end -end delay. Uh, so to go back and stream this up, I put both of my encoders on a custom end-to-end -end delay for 1.8 seconds. Uh, this also, I can also get a lot of information about this on this page, the detailed status. This page will give me information of all the internet connection I have. I will get the information of the, uh, the if I have any packet loss, if I have any late packages or anything like that. So going back to the uh, hockey, uh, you can now see that we have a fully in sync uh, stream. Uh, I'll actually do this while I have you on the screen. I'll uh, I'll put it up again at two seconds, uh, and it will kind of freeze up a bit. Uh, you will see how it that one of the feeds has, has frozen, um, and you will now see that it's out of sync. Uh, I will go back again, change to 1.8, save that. Um, once again, one of the feeds has been frozen, and in a couple of seconds, it should kind of glitch back in. Uh, uh, as you can see right now, it kind of finds its way, uh, and I think there, uh, it's perfectly in sync. Um, yeah, so that's pretty cool. Uh, the next topic I had uh, was for uh, the different protocols that we're using. So uh, right now, I want to show you the uh, uh, multi-view of the the protocols that we've been talking about today. So on your top left side, you have RTP um, plus uh, standard COP3 for direct correction. You have SRT on your top right, uh, RIST on your down left, and then Bifrost uh, on your bottom right corner. Uh, right now, we don't have any packet loss. We don't have any added latency or anything like that. So uh, uh, what I want to do here is I want to use my net destroyer. I mentioned that earlier. Uh, so I'm going to add a bit of latency. Uh, I'm going to add, let's say, 50 milliseconds. And I'll also add 5% packet loss. So here you will see uh, on your top left side, RTP um, is already starting to to have a bad day, uh, doesn't really work uh, perfectly, but still it can kind of adapt uh, to, to some of the, the, the error correction that is happening. All the other protocols are, are doing well, uh, doesn't really uh, affect that much. Um, you will see RIST down there that has 1%. Uh, what we can also see on ID that their uh, percentage isn't as high as, as the others. Uh, that act, that's actually because um, they're not counting the packages they, they lost. So that's uh, why we will see uh, some other um, numbers. But uh, let's uh, increase this. Uh, so uh, let's increase the packet loss to 10 uh, and uh, we'll increase the latency uh, to 100. Uh, 
and uh, we can now see that the wrist is uh, doing a bit of, of uh, is having a hard time. Uh, um, SRT is, is pushing a little bit, but still looks very good. Um, and Bifrost is, is kind of hanging in there. Uh, and what I wanted to show here is that the, the difference in, uh, um, in, in protocols and difference in, in uh, that, that they are all very competent protocols. Um, we will, of course, recommend Bifrost uh, for everything point to point when, when uh, going into NOR to, to into NOR. Uh, but that's mainly because we can uh, we can communicate uh, between um, our encoders and decoders. Uh, we also offer receiver bonding, for example, so you can have multiple ISPs on your your receiver. We can probably go up a bit more. Uh, it doesn't really make that much sense, but uh, let's get up to I don't know fifteen uh, and and see uh, if that still uh, does the trick. Uh, it uh, it's starting to to show more and more artifacts on on um, most of them. Uh, we uh, we don't need to to push this uh, even further, but um, yeah. Uh, one good thing, and uh, I showed you this a little bit, uh, is the uh, um, the detailed status page from the web interface I showed you. Uh, you can see here. Uh, that um, we have 14% packet loss on the internet connections we have. Um, as I mentioned, we increased the latency. Um, but with this said, the, the system talks um, between the units and, and uh, kind of handshakes uh, to give it um, a good, uh, good picture. Um, yeah. All of this can also be monitored. I mentioned ISS. Um, that's the, the main page. This is the web interface uh, from ISS. Uh, this is the overview of all the units. Um, I can see here that, that we have, I get warnings from, from high latency. Um, I, if I scroll down here, um, I can see audio buffer underflow. I can see um, other warnings. Um, more or less saying that that you're having issues on the uh, on the network connection. Uh, so good indication that you need to to troubleshoot more and and have a look at the web interface and the, the network connection and, and see what's going on. Uh, I also mentioned the video server. Um, first off, um, I wanted to to show you uh, SRT poll. Uh, because this is actually a, a very good feature. Uh, it can, um, you can pull the, the feed from uh, uh, two VLC. Uh, you can pull any feed. Uh, it is easier to get through firewalls since it's, it's looked upon as an outgoing um, port request. So uh, if I um, put up SRT or VLC here, um, I can see down here that I have SRT on request activated, the checkbox. Um, if I start this, I have the port number or the IP number and the port number. Uh, I can pull this feed uh, to my laptop. Um, we have a couple of customers doing this for um, remote editorial, for example. One of um, customers that want to showcase um, or show real, or now the video starts up, but yeah, <laughs> um, they want to showcase material. They want to, um, they're working on an advertisement or, or something like that. They want to show their clients. Uh, they can connect the unit. Um, they can tell their, their customers to log into VLC and, and, and plug this in. Um, this is also where the, the video server comes in. Uh, this is a, a good application for uh, a couple of different uh, solutions uh, or, or use cases. Uh, I'm not sure if my internet kind of got stuck. No, there we go. Um, 
so the video server can can access you can access any of your origins you can put the ip stream in or you can put your encoder in um, this will create a browser friendly uh, player for you um, so if i open this in a new link um, i can hopefully get a video up if my internet is good enough for a webinar and a, um, a player uh, i can also pour playback perfect there we go uh, so i can get uh, a browser friendly player um, on my end this application is also actually used on on uh, um, some military applications um, some camp like corporate campus applications where you have one direct router in your your facility uh, uh, that's connected to the public internet but then you're using the video server on your local network as the play out to to different um, departments or or if you're having uh, some kind of uh, um, yeah i don't know conference or anything that you want to showcase you can you can put that up uh, on the local network instead of having every employee uh, pulling down a feed on the public internet you can use this on the local internet uh, from here you can also actually pull rtmp uh, so you can pull rtmp or hls from from the video server if you have a customer that um that's asking for for that feature uh, the video server can actually provide that um, um and uh yeah i actually think that was about it um um not sure um if we have any questions uh if you do have a questions uh question please write that in the uh in the question um, field or whatever um but um other than that i'm, I'm pretty satisfied with uh, what i showed you today um i hope uh, that you learned something uh, about Intinor and, and what we can do. Um, we do deliver a, a fully customization and, and we do deliver tailor-made systems for, for our clients. Um, I'm uh, working with, with customers in the US, I'm working closely with resellers, so I'm always available if you, you have any questions or if you want more information, uh, feel free to, to ping me uh send me an email or send uh, exertus um an email and they'll reach out to me um always happy to jump on uh, uh a sales call uh and um, together with them end users as well uh, so yeah um i don't see any questions so i think everything was crystal clear uh, I'm happy to hear. Um, yeah, I'll uh, give it uh, a minute more. Uh, other than that, thank you for for watching today. Um, glad to 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 see that um, you joined, and uh, hope to see you later.